Hey YouTube, welcome back. This is going to be my second update on my 20 gallon nano reef. So in this video, we're going to just take a quick look around the tank, see if any updates are going on. The main focus is going to be on the phosphate levels in my aquarium. Uh, so as you can see here, the coralline algae in the tank is really growing at a pretty fast rate. And also, if you watched my first update, you'll notice that I moved my C forcata into its position on the rocks. But I'll do a more in-depth update about that coral again later. So as I said earlier, the main focus of this video is going to be about the phosphates in the aquarium. Uh, about two weeks ago, I checked the phosphate levels in my tank and they were a bit higher than I would like to see them. So I wanted to find a way to get that under control. So I'm going to take this opportunity to uh, share my research with you guys. And we'll start off by taking a look at what phosphates are and why they're undesirable. Then we'll look at different ways to control phosphates. Then we'll look at the approach I took for my tank and how it worked out. Okay, so what are phosphates? From what I've found, they seem to be just a byproduct of things decaying in the aquarium. Organics like uneaten fish food and fish waste and even a fish that is deceased and goes unseen in the aquarium for a couple days can cause a spike in phosphates. Another common way that phosphates get in the aquarium is through using tap water for water changes or initial setup. Now I imagine tap water in one area may contain more phosphates than tap water from another area. From what I hear, it sounds like most tap water is going to contain some level of phosphates. So they seem pretty simple, but they seem like the most common ways the phosphates end up present in an aquarium. Now let's look at why phosphates are so undesirable in an aquarium. One of the most common issues is that a high level of phosphates in the aquarium can lead to the growth of nuisance algae. Through my research, I've found that a lot of algae requires two elements to survive. One being nitrates and the other being phosphates. Now this point alone actually leads to a solution to a high phosphates count in the aquarium that we'll talk about later, but basically the presence of macroalgae in an aquarium doesn't necessarily mean that there's a problem in the aquarium, but a lot of people just don't find macroalgae to be appealing to the eye. And so most people don't like to keep macroalgae in their main tank, but we'll talk about that later. Another problem with high phosphates in the aquarium are that it somewhat lays the foundation for a possible cyanobacteria outbreak. And a lot of times when you're talking about a reef tank, you want to mitigate the possibilities of any cyanobacteria outbreak. So now, let's look at some solutions to high phosphates in the aquarium. One thing you can do to try and keep your phosphates down is water changes. I do a water change as part of my normal maintenance, about 25%, once every one to two weeks. Another solution is protein skimming. As you can see here is my protein skimmer with some gunk in the bottom there, so that's working effectively. Another solution could be a refugium that cultivates macroalgae. Macroalgae consumes nitrates and phosphates. Sadly, in this setup, I just don't have enough room right now to set up a sump or a refugium, so I'm not employing that option. So I'm utilizing water changes as well as protein skimming to get rid of the phosphates in my aquarium. Unfortunately, I still have a bit of a high count in the aquarium, so I'm going to utilize one more thing. That last option is a form of chemical filtration. Now you can see here we're looking at my hang on the back filter. If I take the cover off, you can see the current chemical filtration that I'm using in the aquarium. Here we have my active carbon, and on the other side here we have another active carbon pad, but in front of that I have this green pad. 
that pad is a phosphate binding pad. It's basically going to collect the phosphates as they pass through it. Only utilizing that chemical filtration on one side of the filter and on the other side I'm just letting the water pass through the active carbon. I'll probably remove the pad soon and see how the water stabilizes in the aquarium and if I need to I utilize this form of chemical filtration again. So you can see the testing kit I used for my phosphates and over here you can see the current test. Probably hard to tell on the camera, but it looks to me like the levels are probably between 0 ppm and 0.25 ppm, which is not that bad. So I would say that the chemical filtration in the filter is working. Okay, so that pretty much concludes this video. I hope it was helpful. I apologize there's not too much of an update inside the aquarium. But for my next video, I should be getting another coral, so I should have a big update on that. As always, there's the blog up that goes along with this video, and you can find that on my channel or in the description of this video. So comment, let me know what you think, and uh, thanks for watching.